Alright guys, back again with another Cressida update. In today's video, we will be swapping harnesses from the auto to the manual. We will be swapping out oil pans and then we will be measuring the distance of the shifter position between the auto trans and the manual trans and see if it will line up with the center console. So let's get started. Alright, so, as you guys can see, this is the uh, drive selector, shifter selector, but anyways, this furthest position back is park, because when the shifter is fully forward, it pivots this thing back. So I say park, reverse, neutral. This is where I had the, uh, the shifter selector when I removed the engine from the car. So I put it in neutral, um, and you can see that when it's in neutral, so this, this is pr pretty much whatever this measurement is, is dead center on, um, with the, with the, um, with the car or whatever. So you can see that this is right about... 28 inches that's the furthest back because it's it's slotted so about 28 inches 27 to 28 inches right and that would be right about center of where the get uh, shifter is and then if we go look over at this side if we measure this from the, the bell housing back we're right about 27 28 inches so theoretically this um the shifter should pop up right in the middle if if anything maybe just a little too far forward but it'll it'll still be um centered enough to where i shouldn't have to cut anything so yeah it looks like uh that's gonna fit so i'm gonna go ahead and pull out that trans and start swapping stuff over Alright, so let me get you guys caught up to speed real quick. So, my clutch pedal finally came in. I bought it with a master cylinder. Um, got the W58 stainless steel line. 
Here is the clutch pedal that I waited for forever to get. Yeah, it looks like a pretty nice beefy unit. I think that should be it for the uh, clutch pedal side of it. The good thing about it is that you see right here in the engine bay, it's got a provision for the clutch pedal and master cylinder even though this car was never designed with a manual transmission in the US. Um, I'm gonna have to cut my brake pedal but try to find okay you can see it right there that's where the clutch pedal is gonna be um, mounted onto engine side of things we got everything buttoned up had to pretty much swap everything over coolant lines yeah there are these fuel lines so the Supra didn't come with a fuel filter it had this like weird it's basically just like a straight fitting just for um, the two fuel lines to connect together and there was no fuel filter anywhere so I had to use my own uh, fuel lines had to reuse um, obviously my mounts have to reuse my AC bracket um, I've got the reverse wire all spliced together the three prong wire right here the the two bigger wires are the uh, neutral and uh, parking wires. I believe this is if you jump these together, then it gives you uh, yeah either parking or neutral. Um, so that's that's what's going to allow you to start your car. Because I'm reusing my auto harness because um, the manual harness doesn't plug into my chassis. It's not very good detailed information online. Like there, it, it's good information, but you have to kind of know what you're looking at. Um, and me, I'm a visual learner, so. It took me a while to figure it out, but basically jump these two big wires on this three prong plug and this will let, allow you to start your car. This is your power wire for your reverse and then you need this um, other um, plug over here. None of these wires are going to be used, but you need the one wire which is um, it's the top middle wire and for my plug it's a black wire but you could tell or the only way you can tell it's a top wire is because of this little tab right here on um, in the uh, wiring diagram this tab is facing down like this and they show you the plug from um, this side over here so um, obviously that's the bottom then the top middle wire would be you see right here that black wire so I've got this blue wire and this black wire spliced into my reverse pigtail I cut it off of the uh, manual harness so got it spliced into here and then I can plug this straight into the transmission I don't have to use any spade connectors or anything so it's a lot looks a lot more OEM cleaner like this that's what I got um, so like I said I had to swap the harness over that's everything on here oh yeah and then um I got the oil pump bolted up this is the uh, front sump oil pump from the Cressida and then you can see I had this uh, fitting right here this 10 a.m. fitting here and this 10 a.m. fitting right here this one the, the one um, on the block side that one is a uh, it's a 3 8 on the inner thread up here 3 8 NPT or national pipe taper threads so um, it's got that little taper to it gives it a nice seal so it's kind of you twist it in a little bit it gets kind of hard after a while but that's what gives you your nice seal but yep that's a 3 8 NPT to uh, 10 AN fitting right here and then for this side this is a 10 a.m. to um, on the threaded part in here is uh, 18 by one and a half m18 by one and a half so that's what you need for the um, oil pump side what I'm doing here is I'm making my own um, oil crossover tube or pipe or whatever uh, so apparently the factory one is too restrictive you can see it's uh, so this is the crossover tube right 
show you guys what it looks like under here or what it would look like so basically this just bolts on here like like so this would thread in over here and then this one will just bolt right here with the banjo fitting and basically crosses over and the problem that people are saying online is that um, this banjo fitting you see how it just has a couple of holes drilled into it fits in here like this and it just doesn't provide enough oil for the engine so um, I mean it's designed like this from the factory it should be okay but just to be on the safe side um, you know I'm decided to just upgrade it and uh, if you buy one that's already pre-made a hard line one will cost you about 120 bucks and one of the soft line ones at least for the uh, Cressida or the front sump oil pans those cost you right around 70 80 dollars so decided to just uh, make my own line so I ordered the fittings um, got me some PTFE lines I don't really know what that stands for poly something something but basically that line can withstand heat and oil and whatnot so um, people were saying like the regular oil drain lines for like turbo uh, like turbo drains they, it can't sit in the oil um, because the rubber compound that it's made of might like deteriorate over time or something like that so um, basically you have to get the PTFE lines so that they can soak in the oil and it'll be fine and then uh, the last thing or another thing that I did was um, this is the rear sump dipstick right and obviously with the front sump my my oil level is going to be over here so um, the engine block has on this one you can see it has the hole in the front for the uh, dipstick and on this one the rear sump dipstick is blocked off like so and for this one same thing this one was this one right here was blocked off at some point and then this is the uh, rear sump rear sump um, dipstick right here and what I did was I just took a 2764 uh, drill bit and drilled a hole right through it I mean I didn't I didn't start with a 2764 drill bit but basically just uh, drilled it kept going bigger and bigger um, I would probably go just a little bit smaller next time so 2664 that would be what like 13 13 30 seconds that's what I would go with next time because um, this was it's a little bit looser of a fit I had to um, tap it in there a little bit further if you look at this one that one sticks out a little bit further and if you look at this one that one you see how it's kind of like cocked over a little bit um, I had to um, tap it in there a little bit further just to get a tighter fit but um, the oil pan or oil dipstick measuring is good now this one is just here as a placeholder you can see I already cut it I already cut it down so it doesn't actually touch the oil pan or anything but it's just here as a placeholder so that later down the road when I get into boost you know it, there's something in here so that oil doesn't just come out that's the end of uh, the update for this engine uh, pretty much once I get the the uh, this PTFE line uh, once it gets here I'll just install it real quick and then um, I'm just gonna put the engine back in do all my fluids and stuff and fire up but for now I'm just stuck waiting on that part you guys are pretty much up to date of what I've been doing so she'll be started soon